Hi, it's Simone Stewart from Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. This program is aired on the Mercy and Truth Network. We go live on Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. or 8.30 p.m. your time. Um, and on Mondays, we have our repeat at 3 p.m. local time or 4 p.m. within the environment. Hi everyone, welcome to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. This program is all about women, their, their, their traumas, their struggles, and of course, their triumphs. Today I have a very unique woman on set with me. They, she's described as being prophetic, prolific, profound, and of course, a preacher. I speak none other than of Dr. Letitia McPherson. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for now, having me. It's my pleasure. Now, Doc, growing up, you were one of those women. Who I think if I can, I don't remember any other pastor, any female pastor that came on the air while I was a child. And so you were like my little idol. <laughs> yes. I look forward to hearing you. And I was, I was drawn to the prophetic and just how you 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 break the word want of a better better word and so when i heard that you know the, the opportunity came up to speak with you i was looking forward to it and so i just want to thank you again for taking my invitation no doubt i'm sure many more persons want to know who are you you know they've seen you on air before they've heard about you that kind of thing but share a little bit who are you you know growing up what was life like that kind of thing well i was born in a little place called fort george okay in kellett's just so it's just outside of kellett's in clarendon mm -hmm. and um lived for a bit in lloyd as well st catherine mm -hmm. with uh, my dot my mom uh moved from kellett's and left us my, my, my siblings and I with my father mm -hmm. in Lloyd as well and she, she came to Kingston uh, to make a better life to get it to work and you know and so on and so forth mm -hmm. um, at, at age about 14 I ran away from, oh. from, <laughs> from Lloyd as well and I ran to a place in St. Catherine called Benbo there was a, a, a missionary lady in Lloyd as well at the, the church that we attended as, as Jerry and my father was very involved there mm -hmm. um, and uh, she was one of those missionary awesome preacher I mean oh gosh her voice was thunderous when she preached mm -hmm. and I just fell in love with her and so when I ran away and I didn't know yet how to find my mother mm -hmm. I ran to her uh, and uh, you know, as I said to someone the other day, I'm not even sure how I found her, but I did. Mm -hmm. Stayed with her for a while, and then after a while, I, I wanted my mother. Yeah. And so I I ran to I found my mom here in Kingston, mm -hmm. and then migrated shortly after to Toronto to oh. Canada. Yeah, it's a long time ago because mm -hmm. I was in my teens, and now I'm. 67 wow <laughs> you know so it's been a long time but um growing up as a child i was not i was not a a, a healthy child mm -hmm. um i was a well cared for child that's one thing with my father he was one of those that provided for his kids make sure you wear the best you have the best uh to eat you mm -hmm. know very healthy um you know had you in a, a, a good home yeah. had uh, helpers to help stuff like that mm -hmm. so he was very he was a very one of those people that were very prominent in the community yes. worked at the sugar factory in, in lloyd as well from he was 16 years old okay so everybody knows when 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 brother paul or mr small is coming mm -hmm. you know uh, one of those respected ones right. that didn't allow you to speak patois didn't allow you to stand at the gate and talk to friends mm -hmm. didn't allow you to be engaged in 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 any kind of brawling kind of you know that kind of mm -hmm. lifestyle right so we, we were a bit afraid of him um <laughs> you know but as i as i when i uh, especially now i realize that him raising us that way yeah. has helped me. Yes, there were other yes. issues, but that part of my life mm -hmm. has helped me shaped you into and has you. shaped you into who I am today. Yes. But the for health wise, for me, I had rheumatic fever as a child. Yeah, 
and um, and then that, that caused all kinds of aches and pains in the bones, and it affected my heart. And mm -hmm. and now, I don't, now I didn't know that I was sick. I didn't know why. Yeah. Um, you know, but I knew something was wrong with my body. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't know what caused it. I didn't know that it was that fever or whatever it was that was knocking me down as a child mm -hmm. that my grandmother boiled bush medicine and gave us a right. drink. You know? old bush. Yeah, old bush. <laughs> um, I didn't know that the extent of it or how bad that, that what the illness was right. until in 1984 I was diagnosed. Wow. After I had my children I was diagnosed um, that they asked me Oh, did you have rheumatic fever as a child? Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. And they said, well, you have a heart murmur and it's a big one. Oh, so you God. must have had rheumatic fever as a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when we began to, they began to ask questions and you know, how my health was as a child. And, and I, I told the doctor and they said, yeah, that was rheumatic fever. Wow. So that has kind of affected my life. Um, you know, and, and a lot of, of, of other things yes. um, that has followed, it was caused by that, right. like, you know. Well, I know yeah. persons heard you just say um, you ran away at age 14. Yeah. And, you know, you're bring, just listening to you, you're bringing back a lot of stuff, a lot of memories for me, because mm -hmm. my sister ran away at age 14, and the truth is we never knew why um, she ran away. Found her back, but shortly thereafter, I mean, she was off again and that kind of thing. But why did you run away if life was so good and... You yeah. see, the thing about the thing about life is is, is that one one aspect of your life can be great, yeah. but then there are other aspects that are really traumatizing. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was there was some physical trauma, and there was some um, um, abusive sexual abuse and uh, trauma yeah. in my life. Right. Um, and in those days, you don't talk about things like those, because of course those were the 50s and early 60s. Mm -hmm. You don't talk about it, you don't, and especially when the, the person in your life was supposed to be that person of, in a position of trust in your life, right. and that everybody else trusts, yes. um, and that is highly respected, you, you just don't, because nobody will believe you. And even until today, mm -hmm. when, when children are being abused and they're abused by, you know, whether it's a, a cousin or an uncle or a brother or a father or whatever, yeah. and you talk about it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it's, it, it, it's hard for some people to believe. Right, it's almost you like know, it's still a taboo. It's, subject. it's a taboo subject. Mm -hmm. It's it, yeah, it is still a taboo subject. More now, more more so now than ever. Mm -hmm. um, we are talking. People, young women are talking about it, yes. and, and we 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 that have been through yes. it, we are encouraging other young women, um, uh, children yes. that are being um, uh, sexually molested, sexually abused at home, yeah. um, physically abused, to talk about it, tell somebody yeah. about it. Yeah. Because if you don't, it cripples you, it yeah. puts you in bondage. Yeah. It puts you in a place where you feel like you're a mouse, where you feel like you have no value, mm -hmm. you feel like um, you feel chained, you yeah. feel shackled, yes. you feel like you're there's nothing that is good about you, um, your self-esteem drops to the bottom of the barrel, mm -hmm. and um, and you go go through life not knowing who you are, and you know, and wondering why did this thing happen to me, and why did they do it to me, and what did I do? Yeah. It's and, and I'm saying to young people now, young women especially, there are young men that that have been molested, that have been molested too. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying to those that have been molested, look, it's nothing that you have done. Yes. it's not your fault. Yes. When you are placed in a in a in a uh, in a in, with somebody that is supposed to be a, somebody of trust in your life, mm -hmm. and they violate that trust, yes. and violate you, mm -hmm. the, the the very core of who you are, yes. then um, that will destroy you. It's not your fault. Mm -hmm. Find somebody to talk talk to about it. Doc, I want to share something with you. Um, I've carried this for years. Mm -hmm. while, while I was in high school. There was a friend of mine, we were in second form, I remember, and she kept saying to me, my dad keeps coming into the bathroom. And she kept saying these things, but the truth is, at that time, I really didn't understand what she was saying. Until one day she said to me, um, I'm moving to another school. But that only to discover that she was actually pregnant. And not only was she pregnant, she was pregnant by her father. She was being raped by her father. Mm -hmm. And I look back now, I've carried that guilt for 
maybe 30 years now, I've been carrying that guilt because I kept saying to myself, I wasn't able to help. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to help, but that's because I didn't understand. Didn't understand. And at that age and at that time, mm -hmm. um, anybody who hears that will think it's okay for the child's father to go into the bathroom. It's an okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so my follow-up question is, can you tell me why dad is coming to the bathroom? Yeah. What is coming to the bathroom for? Is he coming to help you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, did you need his help? What are... So you have to kind of pull it out, yeah. out of them, mm -hmm. and try to unpack what is going on mm -hmm. there. Otherwise, um, they carry it, and and then when you find out later that yeah. you know that you were somebody that could have helped, but you weren't equipped enough to really, or you didn't understand and. to you know to really um, investigate and and see what was going on. So it's a very sticky subject mm -hmm. and a taboo one as you said yeah. and but we have to remember that it's our life yeah right yeah. and it's your granddaughter's life mm -hmm. and it's your your friend's child life and yeah. it's your daughter's life mm -hmm. and it's your son's life yes That's you know true. and I have known of so many that have committed suicide because Okay. You know, because of that I also have a, fam a, um, a family member who did Got get impregnated by her father, oh my God. and the child died, mm -hmm. and you know, a, a, a teenage. Um, so it's it's a, it's a very, it's a very uh, it's a very shameful situation. Yes, but it's not my shame. Yeah. You see, the one who has been abused, mm -hmm. the one who has who have been um, uh, raped, sexually molested, yes. sexually assaulted, yes. that's not your shame. Yes. The person who did it to you, yes. that's that Very person's true. shame. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy you said that, Doc, and I'm, I'm sure there's someone listening who would have just received that a while ago. And if you're just tuning in, you're tuning in, tuning in to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. And on set with me today is Dr. Letitia McPherson. We're talking about her, her life, you know, all of what she's been through. And I remember, Doc, that you are one of those who, you've been able to break the, 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 the barriers, the, the denominational barriers. As I looked at your bias that you've been to Australia and Africa, and talk to me about, talk with us about ministry. Ministry, what actually propel, propelled me into ministry? I was, I was born again and baptized in the prayer palace in Toronto. It's now the largest multicultural church in, mm -hmm. in Toronto, Canada. Um, pa uh, Pastor Paul Melichuk, that's my spiritual father. And you know, Please don't say, nobody, don't say anything negative about him, because if you want to see me fight, <laughs> that's when you will. <laughs> I swear I will. Don't talk about ministers, and especially the ones that I really, really, really love and appreciate and honor, you know, uh, just don't do it. Don't tear down ministers with me, because you're not going to. Yeah, um, you're gonna just off put me, and and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I sang in the choir. I was on the the, the 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 board. I sang in the choir. I was very involved in my church yes. in every way, form, fashion. Prayer meetings, Bible studies, choir, board, you name it. I was very involved. Involved, you know, um, in the, the life of my pastor and his wife and children. Mm -hmm. And um, so, singing on the choir, I had the opportunity to sing solos. I loved. I loved to sing. I'm not doing as much now because preaching does something to the voice. <laughs> but um and uh, ironically enough I got that I got that from my dad mm. and the preaching. Wow. From my dad. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um yeah. So uh, I here I was um, singing in the choir and just basically kind of ministering while I was singing yeah. and talking to the congregation, you know, and singing. I broke out into into um exhorting Mm. And didn't even realize. Oh, well, wait a minute! Where did this come from? Mm -hmm. And my uh, my choir my choir director encouraged it through yes. through the years. Yeah. And when I when God really broke me forth in ministry is when I felt comfortable enough to mm -hmm. begin to talk about my um, my experiences as a child. Wow. So wow. that's when I broke forth in uh, in, in in ministry. Mm -hmm. Started a prayer group um, with some friends, mm -hmm. about three of us. And it grew to seven, then it grew to I think ten, then it grew to twenty, then it grew to twenty five. <laughs> and uh, before you know, it, we were you had a church. Church, church going in Canada. That, yeah. I want you to hold it there. Yes. If you're just tuning in, you're with uniquely me with Simone Stewart, and on set I have Dr. Letitia McPherson. We are digging into her life, and we are talking about.
the whole men, the whole aspect of ministry, you know, how she broke into it. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Who am I really? Choices, choices, choices. In pursuit of a career? OMG, I'm a wife. Help, I am a mother. Oh, I'm in church. When do I get to be a woman that God called me to be? Uniquely Me covers the acrobatic endeavors of every woman to balance the responsibilities of being a mother, a wife, a professional, a church leader, a friend, yet still maintain her identity. I too am a mother, a wife, a trained minister of religion, a banker, an entrepreneur trying to balance the many hats that signifies my role. My book will help motivate and empower every woman who is really unique in her own way. Grab your copy today on Amazon because Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. Welcome back to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. On set with me today is Dr. Letitia McPherson. She's sharing with me how she basically broke out into ministry, uh, starting, as the word says, starting in your own Jerusalem, in Samaria, and, and then spreading to Samaria and Julia and the whole works. And so talk to us. So you, you, you basically bust out. Well, I, <laughs> I, I did. And um, uh, even until today, I'm trying to figure out how in the world mm -hmm. did that happen? You know, <laughs> how how in the world did sing on the choir and just sharing my life and sharing a testimony and encouraging um, in the congregation, mm -hmm. how did that lead me to Jamaica, back to Jamaica, to to St. Lucia, to mm -hmm. St. Martin, to St. Kitts and Nevis, to Australia, wow. to South Africa, to Nigeria, wow. to Israel, to mm -hmm. <laughs> what's the other one? To um, Kenya, wow. to 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 Mozambique, mm -hmm. to United Kingdom, across the Caribbean, across Canada, and United States. Literally. I am trying to figure out, I've been trying to figure out how did that happen. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think what has happened is when God begins to use you, yes. when God when God calls you, as a, to be honest with you, preaching for me, I think, started at, at, at age seven or eight uh, in the Lighters Village at Chicken Coop when I, <laughs> when I was sad and I was going through all that stuff and we'd go to the, the, the chickens uh, and my father raised chickens mm -hmm. and I would go to the chickens and talk to the chickens about you know my my problems mm -hmm. and talk about God and ask God where are you? I said, Chicken, can you tell me where God is? Or, you know. <laughs> so I think uh, even then he was birthing even something. Even then, God you. was birthing something, yes. and um, and then I find that you know my prayer life yes. was so important to me. Uh, I was radical when it came to fasting and prayer. Forty days, wow. twenty-one days, ten days. Mm. You know, uh, seven days. I mean, I think I must have done in my lifetime must have done five forty days prayer, oh uh, fasting and prayer, yeah. um, and you know, countless twenty-one days. I was just so engrossed in fasting and prayer, yeah. and that empowered my life. Yes, God. You know, so when I stepped out to preach, the anointing was so obvious and yes. evident. And I yeah. must, I must say, as I said, having watched you as a child, if there was one thing we could see just in, coming from the television, from the TV screen, was that anointing. As I tell you, I never forgot it. But in all this traveling, because just checking off a while ago, we <laughs> went to almost 15 countries. <laughs> Where, you know, how did family fit into all of that? Um, um, uh, when I first started, my children traveled with me. Mm -hmm. So I used to have my son and my daughter. I later on adopted um, a boy. So I have three children. Okay. Um, and, and six grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So when I first started out, I used to take my children everywhere with me. I used to drive them and school them, you know. <laughs> wherever you were. Wherever <laughs> I am. And then over the years, I it become too cumbersome to, to, to be taking them mm -hmm. with me. So, um, but my children and I, we had, we, we spent, we spent a lot of time together because it was just, it was just, in the beginning, it was just them and me. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I got married, um, just 25 years ago, where did the time go? Um, 26 years ago. Uh, then my husband, um, Paul McPherson, also, you know, 
accomplished musician. Yes, he would travel with me and the kids. So if when we when we do ministry locally, mm -hmm. the kids are always with us. Okay. Okay. If sometimes we come to Jamaica, they would be with us, or go to the states, they would be. But long distance, no. So I try to fit in the family as much as I could, but not as not as I wanted to. So honestly, they suffered some. Okay. Yeah, and and that's the thing with preachers, mm -hmm. you know, is that you if you don't make time to spend with your family and take care of yourself, mm -hmm. then you know the uh, eventually you're going to start feeling the brunt of it. So I'm liking where you're going because health and ministry and list to you. I've had the pleasure of listening to you at a conference and listening to you just overall. I know you've suffered a few things. Right. Uh, there has been, as a matter of fact, there has been nine strokes, uh, five heart attacks, uh, eight major surgeries. And as I listened, you know, I said, ah, should you, could you take time from the ministry? Or is it because sometimes I think we get so caught in, in the ministry and we're wanting to save souls and we're thinking if we take a break we feel guilty I mean it used to happen to me if I take a break from church I'm feeling like somebody says knock me up somebody's knocking me over the head but talk to us I mean what happened do you think so I'm saying to you now it's not the devil it's your fault it's mm -hmm. my fault we need to back up mm -hmm. we need to pull ourselves up by the boot string mm -hmm. and spend time with our families yes. rest exercise watch your diet mm -hmm. stop all the and i'm not going to call any brand mm -hmm. but stop all the fried chicken and the burgers and the rice and peas and all of that the stuff food. that's all you eat the junk food mm -hmm. juice your stuff put good stuff in your body yes so all right load up yourself with antioxidants and and you know and juices and stuff so that you you so that you can strengthen your body yes right had i not started doing that I would not be alive today. I think so too. I agree. Sleep is important. Even my doctor told me even fifteen minutes per day. Mm. Take a cat nap. Yeah, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of why a lot of pastors are burnt out and are dying from heart attacks and strokes and diabetes. Thank God that that hasn't hit me and it will, it will not. Mm -hmm. um, it's as a result of what we do with this temple that God has given us, awesome. how we handle it. And especially for those already of us already that is already predisposed. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. we have it running through the family mm -hmm. and we know that it's coming through the family. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. and we can rebuke this and rebuke that and all of that as you can, but you have you have a part to play, right? And I like to say, God, uh, we speak about asking for the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, yes. but I find that when when we want things to suit us, we put wisdom and knowledge on the back burner, and we're running oh it's faith and oh the Lord and I mean somebody listening to me might think what is Simone saying? But I'm finding that we keep talking about the Lord. We're asking for wisdom, and it's one of the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And he gives it to us. Sunday, one of our pastors said um, that we, we are procrastinating. We're praying. Praying is a, some, for some of us is a form of procrastinating. Yes, it is. Because and God has given us the answer. Yeah. And we're sitting on, oh, I'm praying about this. I'm praying about this. I'm waiting to hear what God has said. God has already spoken. Everything that we need to sustain us, mm -hmm. life, knowledge, everything. Yes. Everything, God has already created it. Yes. He's not going to drop anything out of the sky uh -huh. because he's already created it uh -huh. right he's not going to make a way out of no way because he's already made the way out of nowhere yes. and he said I have given you dominion I have given you the power mm -hmm. I have given you the authority I have given you the key yes and we need to stand up yes we need to understand who we are mm -hmm. recognize who we are mm -hmm. and take up what God gave us yes and begin to use it come on girl. and stop mm -hmm. talking about you know I'm waiting on God waiting on God waiting on God waiting on God and then we say they that wait upon the Lord will risk knew their strength that's not what that means <laughs> it means when you serve god mm -hmm. okay it's yes. like a waiter that comes to a table to serve yes. you yes they that serve the lord will renew their strength. In, in other words you're still waiting but you're still resting you're still serving but you're resting you're mm -hmm. serving you're praying you're serving listen yes. we can use all the excuses in the book mm -hmm. to justify our bad habits yes, yes. Mm -hmm. To justify, uh, you know, the bad treatment of ourselves, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, yes. all we can, but the fact remains, 
Yeah. That God created, when he created us, he created us holy, he created us healthy, and sin has messed it up. But thank God the second man, Adam, came and changed all of that. And, and now we need to be taking the word of God and applying it to our right. lives, walking in it, not just by routing it, but walking it, living it. I believe God, I trust God, his word says so, his yes. word says so, his word says so. I'm going to live right. it, I'm going to walk it. I agree with you, woman of God. Now, I'm sure somebody listening wants to hear, what have you been doing now? What's happening with you I am now? still preaching. <laughs> Not as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. I am very selective where I go, yes. what, what invitations I, I accept. Mm -hmm. I am mentoring. I'm doing a lot of mentoring now, yes. young men and young women in ministry. Yes, so I'm doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing uh, mentoring with some um, Nigerian, um, about 20 Nigerian ministers. Mm -hmm. So we talk online. Um, oh, thank God for it technology <laughs> um i'm doing some mentoring in in um, pakistan oh, wow. and yeah and some in um in south africa mm -hmm. right so i'm doing i'm doing mentoring um i'm also doing i mean i'm also doing business in mm -hmm. all of this i started a, a business <laughs> yeah all natural skincare product line so all of that uh, the product line actually came out of you know the, my, of the last few years of you know the the, the, the situation that i've i've been yeah. faced with yeah wow i don't know where the time went yeah, but no, it, it just, just so flew <laughs> ladies and gentlemen from all over the world i want to thank you for tuning in to uniquely me with simone stewart today we had dr leticia mcpherson oh my god it was such a pleasure having you pleasure. i was so blessed pleasure. Pleasure. thank you for sharing so um so openly with us Thank you too for tuning in to another program of Uniquely Me. Remember, if you want to have your story aired here, you can reach me at 1-876-856-5769. Remember, Uniquely You is new Uniquely Me. Thank you.